All right, we're going to be taking a look at the occipital bone. So I'm going to turn our skull around to look at the posterior view here. Again, we're going to be outlining some of the borders that make up the occipital bone and pointing out some of the main landmarks. It's going to be a little bit tricky to hold on to the cap, but I'll see what I can do for now. This whole location in the back here is known as the occipital bone, so just outlining it. And then we're going to take a look. So just up above here we have our left and right parietal bones that are meeting with the occipital bone in a suture known as the lambdoid suture, where the parietal and occipital bone meet right here. This is known as lambda. And the parietal bone comes down and meets up with the temporal bone. This is your mastoid process, so just kind of in behind that mastoid process. You see a lot of suture kind of bumps and grooves right in here. And this is known as asterion right in this location here. Now this skull has a little bit of extra sutures and kind of different pieces of bone that we're not really going to go through, um, but you won't see this on every skull and on every kind of diagram. So some will include uh, smaller sutures and other pieces of bone um, like this one, but then you look at the other side and it does not. So they're just giving you examples that you could have other small pieces of bone in the skull as well. Okay, so we've taken a look at the boundaries. I'm actually just going to remove the cap to make it a little bit easier for myself to manipulate the skull here. We're going to take a look just starting with a landmark that you will most likely really need to know because a lot of stuff comes off or around it, and that is this projection sticking out right here. So this is known as the external occipital protuberance, often short formed to EOP. It's very obvious on the majority of our skulls. If you reach and feel the back of your head, you'll most likely feel this projection sticking out. As I run inferior to that and central, so we have EOP and I'm running my finger along what is known as the external occipital crest. And that runs from EOP straight down to this large opening known as the foramen magnum. So we have ligamentous structure known as the nuchal ligament or ligamentum nuchae that's utilizing this structure right here, external occipital crest. Off of the EOP on either side, we're going to see this line. So I can run my finger along the slightly raised area. This is known as the superior nuchal line. And that superior nuchal line is going to head all the way over to the mastoid bone of the, sorry, mastoid process of the temporal bone. So running my finger all the way along here on the superior nuchal line, that is a common muscle attachment for some of the posterior neck muscles. If I go above, this is going to be quite a bit subtler, but there's actually another raised line right here. So depending on your source, you might be able to come across a raised line above the superior, and that is known has two names. One is the supreme nuchal line, or otherwise it's just called the highest nuchal line. And some references will call this the origin for your occipitalis muscle in the posterior part of your skull. If I had inferior from this superior nuchal line, there's another raised line right in here, and this is known as your inferior nuchal line. So there's three lines, inferior, superior, and highest or supreme nuchal line, all of the occipital bone. And this inferior nuchal line is a common attachment for your suboccipital muscles. So EOP, external occipital crest, and three nuchal lines. Okay, as I make my way back towards this large opening, the foramen magnum, on either side of the foramen magnum, we have our articulation location for the skull meeting your vertebrae. So these are known as your occipital condyles, kind of pinch or grasping the whole condyle. And some will have this as the articular surface um, of that condyle. So as we kind of take a look at that from a lateral and inferior view, the vertebrae known as your atlas C1, cervical vertebrae number one, is going to be articulating here. So the lateral masses and the superior articular process of that 
C1 is going to be sitting here, and that C1 on the occiput is known as the atlanto-occipital joint. So that's something you will definitely need to pay attention to for articulation and movement happening of the skull on the vertebrae. If I go just inside the foramen magnum and pinch forward, this is known as the base or basilar part of the occipital bone. So that's something that might come up um, with your occipital bone. And that's, let's just take one more rotation and look around. Okay, good. And that's basically a lot of the external bony landmarks of the occiput. There might be a couple others. Um, we're just not gonna be going through it in this video right now. So I'm just gonna turn and then go inside. We'll change the camera lighting a little bit, there we go. So previously discussed are the parietal and frontal bone. We have the groove for superior sagittal sinus, which is ending around this location. So if I went and looked on the inside of the skull cap, again, you can just kind of see that right here, the groove for superior sagittal sinus of so the occipital bone, which is finishing just inside the skull here. And that kind of ends at this raised location here, which is opposite of the raised on the outside. So the outside, this was known as your external occipital protuberance, and on the inside, this is your internal occipital protuberance. You can see there's a raised area just below your IOP, and this is known as your internal occipital crest, again opposite the external occipital crest. And just as we're getting closer towards the foramen magnum, there's going to be a groove for your occipital sinus. So that's basically, you can kind of see it's a shallow groove just finishing at the foramen magnum, running all the way along here. And that is going to conclude the bony landmarks that I'm going to discuss for the occipital bone today.